Hey, good afternoon and welcome to the Virtual Media Center for the LPGA Drive-On Championship presented by Volvic at Golden Ocala. If you can, please keep your mic muted. And if you have a question, please comment in the chat function of this call. Then when we open it up for questions, I'll call on you and then just make sure to unmute yourself. We are now joined by 2020 LPGA Drive-On Championship at Inverness Champion and the current number five in the Rolex Women's World Golf Rankings, Danielle Kang. Thanks for joining us, Danielle. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> what do you remember from your win last August in Ohio, and how special was it to raise that specific trophy, especially after that ex extended hiatus we had with the pandemic? I think being able to come back um, from the long time off, the biggest time off we've ever had, and knowing that I've put in the work mm -hmm. and being able to win at a prestigious golf course like Inverness, and I played really well out there, um, coming down to the last hole even. It was it was cool to see that the time I put in paid off and um, that I was ready to go even when the season started up. So it was a good uh, reminder that I need to put the time in and um, um, sometimes you just can't forget about, you know, we can steer away from our um, goals and stuff, but no matter what happens, you just gotta keep focus on what you need to do and. It happens. Absolutely. Uh, you also finished runner-up at Reynolds Lake Oconee in late October. Yes. Um, what is it about these LPGA run drive-on championship showcases that really brings out the best in you? Um, well, I do love the golf courses that we're playing mm -hmm. at the moment. It, they're uh, great shop shape, shop making golf courses and they're newer. Um, not this week specifically, but it's just, um, I think whoever can get in the most practice and the most description about the golf course uh, in the short amount of time that we have is going to play well. Um, Ocala, we've played here previously before, but um, I'm not sure. I think it's just uh, being able to come out. It's a new event, and I don't know if we're coming back, but mm -hmm. just like a, we just kind of do want to do a one-time showcase type of deal. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, to see how the LPGA Tour drive-on campaign has kind of blossomed over the last two years to where sponsors like Bulbic are coming out and wanting mm -hmm. to associate with an LPGA Drive-On Championship event. What is it like to see the meaning of the LPGA brand take off as it has, and what does it mean to you? Uh, the brand Drive-On, I mean, it means different to a lot of people, right? But at the end of the day, we all just have to keep pushing forward and keep driving on. That's the whole motto that I take from it, um, personally. But um, for the LPGA brand to be shown that we all come from different places, we have people from different countries, um, but we're all, we all have the same goal in mind with whatever our goals and um, reasons may be, we're still working towards and driving on. So um, being able to showcase that and having sponsors um, back us up as a tour and as their companies, it's just great to see how we can inspire people, um, whoever is a fan of LPJ, whether they are or they're not, but everyone's got stories that people can relate to. So I feel, I feel that um, this tour is growing in such a positive way, and I love the, the companies that are out there that are, that are wanting to help. Um, we're always just taking a step in the right direction, so it's really great to see. That leads right into the next question. Uh, the Aon Risk Reward Challenge hole this week is the Par 5 12, uh, which is one of eight tribute holes, this one in particular to Augusta National's Par 5 13th. Uh, first of all, how awesome has the dedication of Aon been to the LPGA Tour members, uh, especially with the prize at the end of the season? And have you guys maybe, especially after 2019, taken a little more notice of what is available to you guys? I feel, I mean, Aon Risk Reward is two separate questions for me. I think Aon Risk Reward being able to give us a, the million dollar prize, um, equal money to what they give out on the PGA Tour is really, really cool. Um, it's a big money for us, you know, even a million dollars. I mean, I don't think we have any tournament wins that are a million. So. Yeah, just CME and... Yeah, it's exactly. So yeah. it's it's like a huge prize for us. And um, to have that opportunity, to be given an opportunity is really mm -hmm. um, great, especially from a company like Aon. Um, uh, second question, to, I mean, second answer to the question, that number 11 and 12 that are dedicated to 12 and 13 at Augusta, it's done absolutely beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to... Like, I would like to see that we can play it um, the way it was meant to be played. Um, the green is protected so well by around the greens and everything, and I can't reach 12 here, yeah. 
Um, I think women's golf sometimes we can outlook and see that 490 yard par five is not really reachable. It's an opportunity to reach and holes like that, especially replicating Augusta, I feel that we need to have more comparable clubs into greens and we can protect it with rough and firmer greens, but greens out here are firm. Um, around the green is protected by grain and the shot shape design itself is what makes the hole so great, no matter if I have a five iron or a four iron. But mm -hmm. I'm hoping that it's not gonna play the way the tees are right now because it'll just, I'm just gonna have to lay up. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that's how it was meant to be played. And I think it'll be more exciting for people to see an eagle and going for the greens and um, especially to make the tour better too, even, even better than what we're playing right now to showcase the shot making that the girls have. Um, even number 11, I have a six iron in right now. Oh wow. And it's just, you, even with the wedge in your hand, you know that you have to be very um, meticulous on what kind of shot you want to hit with mm -hmm. the green falling off the left, the front, and the right. It's just, I want those things to be in play instead of just hitting to the middle and trying to just two putt and things like that. So um, I think they've done a great job out here in replicating a couple of the holes, even the St. Andrews number one hole. Yeah, it's really cool to see because I, I see it. I see the wall hole and I go, yeah. oh wait, I, I feel like I've been here. And I saw the ball to stroll hole. Yeah. Um, that back pin is a five iron in. So it's kind of like kind of like going to Epcot and Disney. Yeah, you know, it's just little holes over. of everywhere. <laughs> I, it's a it's a great track. So I think we get a little sense and taste of all this um, great design. So I'm just hoping that uh, we can try and capitalize on it. And uh, for Aon risk reward, you know, some there are going to be people that are going to risk it, but it's too much of a risk with the three wood. <laughs> 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 that dispersion is way too big. <laughs> Don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we know a lot of players, especially yourself, listen to, to music while mm -hmm. you practice or, or warm up for your round. Um, who are your, some of your favorite artists that you're currently listening to? And what role does music play in your golf preparation? Um, I have been pointed out that I have different music tastes depending on my moods. And I guess I listen to, if I'm in a really sassy mood, I guess I'm in the Ariana genre. <laughs> But lately, I've been listening to a lot of country. Um, there's a Today's Hit Country entire uh, playlist, and it's really calming and nice. And I know that, you know, from Diamond Resorts, that I, mm -hmm. I you know, talked to Lee Bryce or Cole or all those guys and Randy. And, but it's just, um, yeah, I've been really into country mood lately. So just listening to whatever hits there are on there. Yeah. You can't go wrong. Um, no, and I've always been a Justin Bieber fan, so he's always in my <laughs> he's always in my playlist. Um, yeah, so music does play a big role in my life. I think um, when I'm practicing, I always want something calming, but I normally don't listen to music as much as um, I would like to when I'm practicing because I like to feel I want to focus on how it feels like without the music because mm -hmm. music makes me relax. So depending on the timing and what I need to practice, I just uh, turn the music on or off. But Is there anything else you listen to besides music? I know somebody, I can't remember who it was last year, but we asked them what they listened to and they said they listened to a metronome. People listen time. to, yeah, metronome on the greens a lot for the yeah. tempos and stuff. Is there anything you, that's different outside of music maybe that you've ever listened no, to? No, I, no, not really. I do a lot of meditation stuff on, mm -hmm. on the phones. Um, LPJ is partnered with Headspace, so you do a lot mm -hmm. of Headspace talking. That guy's t voice is so calming. I don't know if you've ever heard him yeah. talk. It's <laughs> yeah. so calming. But there are moods when I'm just going, okay, Andy, stop talking. And then, you know, but uh, no, it's just um, whatever is there. And I'm not really into audiobooks. I'm mean, into physical books, so I'm going to try and get into audiobooks, maybe. Nothing like a good book. No, nothing like a good book. So, yeah, it's all, it varies. Well, everything starts with one in a row. And uh, you had a, an amazing streak snapped, unfortunately, last week. 17 consecutive cuts made. Um, I told Ben, in team sports, after a challenging loss, analysts always talk about how it, it sparks the, the team to greater heights later on in the year, it seems, that they overcome adversity. Did you take anything away from something that you hadn't experienced in almost two years uh, that you think will light the fire for the rest of 2021? I needed some me time after last week. I, I came here on Tuesday at 11.58, I think, oh, no. because I had to test before noon. Um, it had nothing to do with about missing the cut for me. Mm -hmm. I think I wasn't really ready mentally to play an event, and I just tried to 
shut it down, mm -hmm. everything, and just try and focus on golf, and I didn't succeed in that. So more than anything, I just kind of wanted to be in my own state of mind and play this week in the proper state of mind. So it happens. I mean, bad golf happens, right? And I just kept making bogeys. Every shot that I picked was a wrong shot. Um, every type of, I mean, I think they showed me struggling on TV. I, every shot that I picked was incorrect. Mm -hmm. Whether it was a chip, whether it was a putting line, whether it was a shot into the green, it was just incorrect. So. I guess um, sometimes you just don't have the enough focus, um, but I didn't feel that the game itself was lacking. That's my true honesty. It's not like I didn't know how to hit a yeah. shot. Yeah. I just yeah. kept doing the wrong things. And um, coming into this week, I just kind of wanted to regroup mm -hmm. and just focus on making Danielle happy, basically, and just being able to play golf and um, get back into my own rhythm and routine and instead of just getting too eager and too excited and all that stuff so um but yeah i, I had a really good program today the guys were so cool i have four people that are members here um and they just raved about the golf course mm -hmm. and um they were so bummed i couldn't reach 12. <laughs> <laughs> they were like come on and i went i know i mean hopefully they pulled the tees i don't know what to tell you they've probably been goes, looking forward to someone who goes, can help them with that hope i know <laughs> exactly i know he goes he goes come on can you just hit the three wood i go it's 217 cover i can't hit the three wood. i can lay up and he goes that doesn't help us so we all had to lay up so that <laughs> bummed him out but yeah so it'll be all good but people did talk about how how long since i missed the cut but it's not just about making a cut or missing a cut, right? It's just about being in the right state, being able to compete, being able to go up to the next shot. Even if I made the cut, I mean, I probably wasn't prepared to play Saturday, Sunday. That's yeah. and, it, and it happens, right? Because I, I, I watched, uh, I actually watched the Michigan Wolverines last night in, mm -hmm. in college basketball. They've been dominating teams. And I'm sure a one loss is mm -hmm. just going to spark them to where they're going to reach even greater heights. Yeah. And I think that's kind of interesting take that you have on it, which is... I mean, people forget every tournament, there's about 144 people, yeah. 46 to 152, mm -hmm. 256. I mean, it depends, but only there's only one winner. Mm -hmm. So you still lost. <laughs> yeah. So I sometimes tell people, don't get so caught up in cuts. I mean, yeah. you still lost, Yeah. you know, but... At the end of the day, yes, we do need to make payments and we have to make <laughs> money, but sometimes it happens. I mean, if you get so caught up in like missing a cut and think, why did this happen? I go, it really wasn't my game. Yeah, I'm just gonna be honest. Yeah. It just wasn't all there. And I don't think I was there to play the weekend. Yeah. It happens. Absolutely. Well, this is a Solheim Cup and Olympics <clears throat> year, obviously. <clears throat> um, you competed on Team USA for the past two Solheim Cups. How high on the priority list are those two events for you this year? Um, starting with the Solheim Cup, I would love Solheim. I mean, there's nothing like the first TS yeah, Solheim Cup. There's nothing like similar to the Solheim Cup in LPGA events. You know, it's just the USA versus Europe, but you have your teammates and you get to play for USA. You get to play for your country. So it was. it's been two different scenarios for me, an away game and a home game. And I just, I really look forward to that event. And I know I've heard some things about not happening if we don't have fans and things like that, but I just think that we should, I would love to see it being hosted regardless because it's just so much is riding on Solheim Cup as in like the players worked so hard to earn that spot. And not only that, people get to watch and they get encouraged, whether it's one-on-one -on -one match or USA versus Europe, I know people want to come out, but it's televised and you know, with the whole gambling going on, I mean, gamble on one-on-one -on -one matches, but whatever it may be, but it's just, it's just so exciting to see, and people want to root for you, not just for you, it's for your team, and so I'm comes unexplainable, and I just hope that it happens this year. Absolutely. Fingers crossed. And the Olympics has been my dream ever since I was a toddler. It was a different dream on how I wanted to get there, mm -hmm. but... Um, I wanted to get there with martial arts, but golf wasn't available for years. And then for some reason, starting in Rio, it became um, attainable. So Olympics has been something that I wanted to do all my life. I wanted to compete in all my life. So it is really high on my priority list. And people have said, don't, you know, don't make it too exciting or too important. And what happens if you fail? And, but that's how it is important to me, and I want to be an Olympian. I want to be able to contend in the Olympics, and 
um, that's something that's been on my calendar for a long time. So really excited. Uh, yeah, I even cried last year when it got delayed. So <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't cry very often on those things, but I, I automatically cried when yeah. the qualify, qualifying extended. Mm -hmm because it should have been cut off in June, but then it extended whenever we restarted till this year, June. Yeah. And I just cried. <laughs> and I, I actually cried for one minute and I stopped and I said, okay, <laughs> we're gonna be okay. Just keep playing good golf. It'll take care of everything. Absolutely. <laughs> but that's how much I wanted to go, you know? So. Yeah. Right around the corner. If you guys have any questions for Danielle, please comment in the chat. If not, we'll let you out of here on this one. I'm a um, chatterbox today. Yeah. Uh, you, I like how you, you're just, just your description of uh, mm -hmm. the par five twelve is just painted a really good picture, and its placement on the course very similar to where Augusta's is. And over the years, we've seen a lot of drama unfold on that corner. Do you envision something kind of similar that could not happen if this it's week? not reachable? Not, not, not reachable. There won't be that much drama. It's just, I that's something that I want to. I don't know. I think hope, it's perception, right? Mm -hmm. And I think average tour players on our tour don't hit it as far as people perceive us to hit. But I want us to be able to play it the way it's designed. And I want, because sometimes I think golf gets caught up too much in length of the hole or the distance of golf, and that's how they protect golf courses. But actually, like firmer greens, thicker rough, narrower fairways, shot shaping, and our tour is the girls are so unbelievable on how well they can shape their shots, especially with their woods, two long irons, even their short iron. Their wedge games are impeccable, but it has to be played. Like let them, I want them to be able to have even more opportunities than now to showcase what they have. But on number 12 this week, which would be 13 on Augusta, mm -hmm. it would be hard to hit a wedge close on a side slope. It would, I don't know, I wanna see the, if you if they hit it around the green, it would be a nice chip. But if somebody hits, like the long hitters, if they hit a great drive and great second shot, I think they should have a good opportunity for an eagle. Mm -hmm. And I want people to know that girls can make eagles too if we have good opportunities and good clubs in their hands. And there's nothing that people can do that we can't do, you know. But I just want us to have the the yardage opportunities sometimes to be able to showcase that. So um, I think it it's, you never know, but. Some days, I think one out of the four days, we always can do something. Yeah. So let's hope they move it up a little bit. Yeah, it's not just 12. I just want, you know, like even even 11. You know, it's mm -hmm. the, that, if you make that a wedge hole, that's a tough hole. Yeah. Even nine irons, it's a good control. I mean, these girls have amazing control of their irons. Yeah, and that's what, we, that's what the fans like to see. I think it'll be exciting. It'll be more, it'll bring in more excitement for people to watch. It'll be more exciting for players and they can choose a different shot and they know how to hit all these shots but sometimes it narrows down the shot choices if it's played so long for us mm -hmm. so um i mean i'm just speaking for the average tour hitter so <laughs> <laughs> but yeah thank you for your time Danielle. Cool. thank you thank you very much good luck this week thanks